traditions and look back and reflect with a sense of pride about what we have achieved over these years since our independence and adoption of our constitution. We have come a long way since then. India is the largest democracy in the world with a vibrant and open society, independent judiciary and a responsible media. The Indian economy has performed quite well over the last two decades and is expected to grow at a rate of about 7% in the medium to long term. The government friendly foreign direct investment policy, a unified taxation regime and adopted measures to significantly improve the ease of doing business. India and Hong Kong enjoy a unique relationship, which dates back to the arrival of the first Indian businessman in Hong Kong in the first half of the 19th century. The contributions made by the Indian community of Hong Kong between Hong Kong and India. The double taxation agreement, which was signed on 19 March 2018, has entered into force on 30th November 2018. Indeed, this is the third event organized by our Indian friends, which I marked during which I was one of the panelists. Today is, of course, special for the Republic Day commemorates the establishment of India's constitution in January 1950. The milestone occasion was marked with much pride and nationwide festivities in India this past Saturday. I'm pleased that we have the opportunity tonight to recognize Republic Day and no less important to acknowledge the strong and growing ties between our two economies. Hong Kong and India have a good deal in common. We are both blessed with a rule of law and an independent judiciary. We take pride in ensuring that our respective societies are open, that information, talent, and capital flow freely, and that opportunities are pursued and embraced. That, ladies and gentlemen, is reflected in our vibrant trade and expanding cooperation. Hong Kong is home to a large Indian community and many Indian companies, and we greatly treasure their contributions, your contributions, as many of you are in the audience. According to the Indian Chamber of Commerce Hong Kong, there are 1,500 to 2,000 Indian companies operating in Hong Kong, covering fields such as airlines, banking, jewelry, and information technology. India was our seventh largest trading partner in 2017, while Hong Kong was India's fifth largest partner in trade that same year. In 2017, our bilateral goods trade totaled more than 34 billion US dollars, up a gratifying 27% over 2016 totals. Indeed, between 2013 and 2017, our bilateral trade had an impressive average annual growth rate of 11.7%. It should also be noted that 13.3 billion US dollars worth of trade between India and the mainland of China was routed through Hong Kong in 2017. That represented some 14% of the total trade between India and the mainland that year. Our bridge was in September, the world's longest bridge and tunnel sea crossing. Trained with the Hong Kong session of the Guangzhou Shenzhen Hong Kong Express Railway, which opened about the same time, these two world class transport links ensure fast and efficient connectivity with the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area, and mainland markets in general. The Greater Bay Area development is set to enter a new stage with this outline development plan expected to be unveiled in the coming month. I'm confident that opportunities for India companies that partner with Hong Kong will only increase. Let me add that the double taxation avoidance agreement between Hong Kong and India has already come into force since the end of last November, giving the flow of investment, talent, and technology between the two places a further boost. With our close economic ties, we hope and we have announced that uh, we want to open a new economic and trade office of Hong Kong in Mumbai. At present, we maintain 12 overseas ETOs, but more are needed, certainly in Asia, and the 13th ETO in Asia will be open next month in Bangkok, Thailand. So we have to take advantage of emerging business opportunities between Hong Kong and India. Mumbai, India's largest city, as well as the nation's commercial, cultural, and entertainment capital, is a natural base from which to strengthen our presence in India, building connections that can help Hong Kong and Indian businesses excel. In this development, I count on the continuous support of the council all your successor as you are leaving us. Beyond business, I'm pleased 
without expanding cultural ties. I know that we are in negotiations towards an MOU on cultural cooperation. I look forward to a successful conclusion to what we will that mean of our cultural industries in our respective communities. But even before that, there's already a lot to look forward to. For example, the fifth edition of India by the Bay Festival, which brings nine days of Indian music, dance, theater, film, food, and much more, will open on the 1st of March at Asia Society. Then in June, the world will celebrate International Day of Yoga, and I know the Consulate General of India will be very much involved in that event in helping to bring wellness to Hong Kong people. On that inspiring note, I want you to join me in a toast to the great nation of India and on its landmark 70th Republic Day.